I think we're on. It's William Cosentino. What's going on? In front of my whiteboard today because I wanted to address some questions that came in from uh, a subscriber of mine. And uh, I did this uh, on a video prior as well. Um, I had a bunch of questions come in through email. And so I, I thought I'd, I'd, uh, I'd start making videos of it so that it benefits the entire community that comes by and sees some of my stuff. So um, this video is a result of four questions that, uh, that one of the gentlemen wrote in and he was curious about. So I, I thought they were, they were valid questions or good questions, uh, especially for people just getting into uh, the IT field um, that have been into it for just a little while. Um, so anyways, uh, let, let's go ahead and start with the questions. Uh, you might not be able to read them entirely, maybe because of the lighting, the blue mark or whatever. So his first question was, why do companies outsource, essentially? What, what's the point of outsourcing? Um, and by outsourcing, we're talking about overseas or to, you know, outside of the country. In the United States, um, it's, a, it's a very wide phenomenon, especially for large enterprise corporations to outsource some of their operations uh, outside of the U.S. and into India is the most popular one, okay? Um, there are other countries as well, but most of the time you're going to find that most of it's outsourced in India. The answer to your question on that, it's very simple. It's, it all comes down to budgets, okay? Um, that's, that's the number one reason why a company will outsource its work. Um, it's, it's, it's better for their bottom line. And it actually, we'll talk about that question number three where uh, why companies don't value the IT department, but uh, the budget's number one. Number two, um, it, you know, it's, they can get, uh, especially companies that run 24 seven, it's a lot easier to, to, uh, to have people in those time zones uh, work the, the, you know, the, the off hour shifts that are here in the United States or whatever comp uh, country you're in. Um, so it helps with that respect as well. And uh, one thing that he did mention was he, he sees a lot of it with desktop support, uh, but not so much with, say, uh, you know, the system and network administrators and things like that, and SQL administrators. Yes, it's true that most of the outsource work is going to be desk, desktop support level and that type of stuff. But I will tell you that I know for a fact that companies do utilize offshore for systems admins and, and, and network admins, SQL database administrators, um, and you know all the different areas of technology. They, they definitely do that. Most of the time, you'll see that those, those positions are outsourced just to cover the off hours um, for, again, for whatever country that you're in. So um, they're 24-7 shops. They obviously need support all around the clock. So most of the time, they're going to they're gonna handle that work over in other countries. Um, and then it spins back around over to the United States when, you know, when it's morning time or whatever it is. So it does happen, um, but most of the time it's just to take it's just to cover the off shifts. Um, but I'm sure companies do it full time, you know, where they don't need a, a that position at their company. So they'll just offshore, they'll outsource it, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it does happen. Okay. Question number two is um, this came up because. His first response to one of my videos was, um, you know, having a quote-unquote safe job, okay, uh, in the systems admin, network admin role, and I, I quickly responded to his, his response saying, uh, there's no such thing as a safe job. Nowhere in the world is there such thing as a safe job. The only place you're safe is if you run your own company, and that's it. Okay, and you know even that is obviously that's 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 risky. But you have full control over what happens. You don't have anybody that is controlling your paycheck, your job position, or anything. Okay, so there there really is no safe job, and you know even in the healthcare industry, as weird as it might sound, they even lay people off. Okay. Um, 
you know, school districts lay people off. You know, they're cutting teachers all over the place. I mean, it's just, it, there's, there's really no such thing as a safe job. And one of his comments about, uh, or, or on question number two is, how do I safeguard my job? Okay, well, uh, actually, it was two-part. How do I safeguard my job? Do I just keep all the knowledge to myself so that I'm an asset to the company? No, don't do that, okay? Um, that is the worst thing you can do in, in the IT field, all right? It's frowned upon extremely hard, all right? You don't want to be that person that's in your organization that's the, that's the guy that people come to and you don't want to help because you want to hoard all the information. We call them knowledge hoarding or knowledge hoarders. You don't do that. We're in a, you have to be in the environment where we help each other, okay? No matter um, what environment we're in, you're supposed to cultivate and, and, and nurture each other and help each other in an environment, especially in IT because you're running the business essentially, all right? Now, I did talk about this uh, slightly in another video, but uh, um, you never want to hoard your, your knowledge. You never want to keep it all to yourself. You will be that guy, that guy in the organization that everybody will eventually hate and they'll despise you. And quite frankly, management will get rid of you, okay, if they see through what you're doing. And uh, because you don't want to hoard information. You're not an asset just because of your knowledge up here. I promise you, you're not, okay? Because in, in, especially in IT, right? You've got all these people that have certifications. You know, they've got a wall full of certifications, but they don't know anything about the technology because all they did was study a book. It's very easy to do. Millions of people have done it. Back in the day, we used to call them a paper MCSE, which is the original Microsoft certification. Paper MC, MCSE are the people that picked up a book, studied, 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 went and took an exam, and now they've got this, this, this four-letter credential on their resume that doesn't mean squat, okay? So just because you have knowledge does not mean it's going to safeguard your job, all right? There's a lot of other things that management will look for in, in your position outside of the scope of your, your, your role as an IT administrator or whatever your role is, okay? And some of those things are going to be attitude. Are you a team player? Do you come to work on time? Do you go the extra mile? Um, you know, are you leaving early? Do you take long breaks? Are you calling in sick? I mean, there's just a whole other slew of things that management is actually looking at to evaluate you as an employee, all right? So hoarding knowledge and and uh, and thinking that just because you're the best on the team is going to keep you around a little while is a very false mindset. So please don't do that. Um, you don't want to be that kid, that guy on the block that that's known as the person who doesn't want to help anybody in their team because they feel threatened by their job, and that's the key. If you come across people that do that in an organization, it's because they feel threatened that someone else is going to take their job, especially the guys that are down here who are trying to excel and get better at what they're doing. They, the, a lot of times you'll find this, that the guys up above will start pushing down on those people and ignoring them because they feel threatened that their job eventually will be taken over by someone else because of their, they will outwork them eventually, okay? So, safeguarding your job, it means a whole realm of things. And, and, the, and those are the things that I mentioned a few minutes ago. You need to, have, you need to be a well-rounded person, and your chances of holding on to that job are a lot better. You know what I'm saying? Study hard, do what you got to do, outwork everybody, you know, just go full force, 10x what you're doing, <clears throat> and just be a good person. All right, and that's what it's going to take to uh, safeguard your job. Number three, why, <laughs> this is a great one, okay? Why do companies put no value on an IT department, okay? The IT department, in the eyes of the accounting department in any organization, okay, the IT department is a 
big, big cost factor for them. It's not a profit center at all. So anywhere that they can cut the bottom line to save the company money, they will do it. And unfortunately, it happens right in the IT department where you and I work. All right? And it's a really unfort unfortunate uh, situation because what runs the business ultimate, ultimately? We do, as an IT department, we have to keep those computers running, those servers running, those networks going in order for the company to run. Yet, we are considered a cost and they will skimp as much as they can on IT budget. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, unless you're working for a company that has a a uh, a, a, a C, uh, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, a chief um, operating officer that's that 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 really understands IT. Um, a CIO, a chief information officer. Those guys have to be on board, and uh, it just doesn't happen that often, especially in the large corporations, um, and even in the small ones too. It, it just doesn't matter what kind of company it is. Uh, IT is a cost. It, it, it costs them money, it makes them no money, it, it's not a profit center for them, so unfortunately uh, IT is going to get slashed, and that includes jobs, okay? And that's why, um, that's why so many network administrator systems admins uh, carry so many hats. You know, they, they, wear, they wear an exchange hat, they wear a network hat, they wear a SQL database administrator hat, they wear a desktop hat. I mean, there's guys that do everything and, and, and you know they, they have no time for themselves. They they're a master of all, a jack of all trades, a master of none. Okay, and so it, it's a very difficult situation, and that's just the way it goes. Question number four: um, IT management and the lack. He, he's basically asking, do do we think do you think that um, managers in the IT departments that 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 do not understand IT. Uh, are they are they a roadblock um, for for success and, and, and are they part of the problem? And I would say that yes and no. Okay, there's you don't have to you could be a good manager and not understand IT. Um, you could be a good manager and not understand accounting. Um, you know, it depends on what what department you are because. Managing is a whole thing in and of itself, right? There's a whole um, science behind be, being a manager, right? And so with IT, it definitely helps that the IT management team understands technology, obviously, right? Um, and, and most of the time they do. Um, a lot of times you will see managers in an IT department, um, they, they have an understanding of IT, and it's even better if they were once in the trenches and now are a manager because they truly understand the work that's being done by folks like yourself, okay? But management in general can be a bottleneck in any part of a company. And so, I mean, kind of going back to question number three, there's, there's not a lot you could really do about that. Um, there's a lot of shitty managers, okay? There's a lot of companies that have too many layers of management. They just there's there's a, a huge imbalance between um, employees and managers. You know, you, it, there's the the ratio between a manager and, and a group of employees is just lopsided, and so that that's one of the fundamental problems is that there's too much management, and uh, you know there's a manager for the manager for the manager, and then you know this manager has to have a meeting for that manager and it's just it, it's it's ridiculous so unfortunately it's something that we have to deal with as part of, work, of working in this kind of environment and you know there's there's really not a lot that can be done um, obviously if there's a manager you're reporting to that person so you don't really have a lot of say um, although I will tell you that you know getting off topic just a little bit it's it's Never be afraid to speak up, okay? Because managers aren't always right. In fact, they're probably wrong most of the time, right? Especially if they're an IT manager and they don't understand the technology and what you're trying to do as a team. 
So never be afraid to speak up and, uh, and, and give your peace of mind. Do it with, uh, you know, be genuine about it, be respectful, and, uh, and, and, and make your points, okay? If you're going to speak up, make sure that you've got, you've got all your, your ducks in a row and you know if you're going to complain about something make sure that you've got a, a solution for it as well so no no whine and no bitching with no solution make sure that if you've got something to say that you have a valid uh, solution or you've got something to back you up all right and as a team collectively you can get that done and and, and most of the time a good manager will listen if they don't listen it's kind of hard. You, you, you really have your hands tied. There's not much you can do there. So, uh, I hope that helps you out. I hope that answers some of your questions. And, uh, you know, put your comments below. If, uh, if this is your first time watching any of my videos and this happens to be the first one, you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you subscribe below and uh, let me know what kind of questions you've got. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to answer that. Um, just general general questions about IT. Um, I have a specialty in, in, in technical support and uh, uh, you know high-end technical support and how to do your job and how to be more efficient at tech tech support type of stuff and 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 also about how to get a job and how to work with people and, and just overall management type stuff as well. So um, I'll talk to you on the next video and uh, be good. Talk to you later. Bye bye.